Yes, testing again. Welcome everyone. Is it working? It uh, took me a while to set everything up. But right now we really should be live. So um, apology if that was a little bit awkward. It's the first live stream, so I uh, guess I required some time to make the preparations, I suppose. But, uh, Let's see, uh, this should be live on my YouTube channel, right? Yes, okay, good, it's working. Welcome everyone, sorry if it was a little bit awkward, I have uh, no clue how to set up uh, live streams. So uh, if this is a success, we can do more in the future. I can highlight your comments, uh, such as Saturnit, your show. Yeah, it's fixed, see, and uh, let's go, I can highlight them. Good, good. So what I'm going to do today is, since it's Christmas, I'm going to have uh, dinner with you guys on YouTube. Yeah, you can uh, bring it. See, this is my mom. She's giving me dinner. See that? <laughs> so happy holidays, guys. Yeah, bye, mom. Um, the idea was just uh, because this year, I suppose, because of uh, the coronavirus, a lot of people are alone during the holidays. And that kind of sucks, perhaps. So I thought it would be cool to do it together, because uh, I imagine maybe a lot of people nowadays are lonely. So uh, personally, uh, Christmas, for me, it's not really a big thing. I am not that big on uh, Christmas. But hey, you know what? If uh, other people uh, can celebrate it, I guess we can do it online, right? So. Um, I'm not sure what what we call this stuff in English. Uh, maybe I can Google it for a second. Let's see. Uh, ta -ta -da. I'm going to translate it. My English is not that good. By the way, feel free to um, to ask me questions because I can answer them live, right? Okay. Okay. We're getting this party started, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Yes. Um, well, this stuff in Dutch, we call it like rachu, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is in English, to be honest. Uh, it's kind of like it has meat and mushrooms, and it's all liquefied, like it's coming out of a Chinese factory. But uh, yeah. So meanwhile, I think I can uh, ask you some uh, answer some of your questions. Let's see. I like your couch. Thanks, man. It's a wonderful couch. Uh, let me see. Yeah, sorry for that. It's my first live stream, and because of that, um, I had no idea how to set all of this up. So I, I basically I fucked up, but uh, it's working now. So the next time we do this, it uh, should work perfectly. Let's see. Oh, that species is a nice one. Um, they uh, kind of overwinter as eggs for a short while. You can uh, put the eggs cold. What's interesting is they both hibernate somewhat as eggs and as cocoons, I believe. I had uh, the species from Taiwan once. Uh, you can keep the pupa cold until spring, and then they hatch very early. And if you get a mating, keep the eggs cold as well. And a few weeks later, you can easily raise the caterpillars on fire thorn, like piracanta and uh, liquid amber. Why did I start keeping insects? I don't know. It's probably autism or something. I was always obsessed with them. <sighs> hey, everyone. What's up? Welcome to the live stream. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, I have to eat dinner for a while, okay? So I'm multitasking right here. Uh, well, I have no idea, to be honest. I have no clue, so you'll have to find out yourself. Uh, I think they're one of their food plants that you can use is like uh, strawberry tree or Brutus uh, inendo. I believe they like it, but I, I have little experience with that one, so 
that's too much for me to answer because there's over 40 species that I have right now. And um, I don't really keep a list, so I have really no clue what species I have. So you're going to have to see on my channel because if I have to name them from top of my head, I'm, uh, I have no idea. I hoard insects so much that I don't even know what species I have. It's kind of weird, huh? But that's how it works. Uh, that's a difficult one. It was probably the cabbage white butterflies. I had them in my home when I was a, when I was a child. I was very young, and uh, we had them from the garden, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I don't have a driver's license. That's actually common for Dutch people. Uh, I, a lot of friends my age don't have a driver's license as well. One thing I like about the Netherlands is we have a very highly developed public transport, and we have even special roads for uh, bicycles. So yeah, uh, because of that, it's really easy to travel everywhere on bike, basically. And that's what I do. Here is the first official Bart Koppens mukbang. Here you go. Probably need to finish this for a second. One moment, OK? I'll click on the next question. Terrible. I hate winter. There's nothing for me to breathe in winter, honestly. It really sucks. Winter is a very bad time for my channel, too. In winter, I get very little views. In summer, the views go like whoop, very high, and in winter, the views go low. It's because I don't have much to breed in winter, but it's also because <clears throat> it turns out people are searching for butterflies and moths less in winter. And yes, I, I see your question, by the way. I really do my best to answer all of your questions. Sorry if I didn't see it. Uh, you guys send me a lot of questions, and uh, sometimes I take a long uh, time to answer. But uh, let me let me find your question. Uh, well, no. I try not to handle them too much. On YouTube, I often have them in my hands, of course. But in reality, this is a very bad idea. Caterpillars are very sensitive to things like bacteria. And if you touch them with your hands all the time, you can make them sick. I uh, disinfect my hands if I touch them with my fingers, because the bacteria on there are pretty bad for caterpillars. Well, I, I'm not sure how to quantify this, honestly. How does it depend on heat and light? I mean, they like warmth. The warmer you put them, the higher the chance that they will come out earlier. But it's a little bit unpredictable. Honestly, uh, just put them on room temperature and forget about them. Well, let me show you guys. I have a cool trick. I can share my screen. Um, yes, for a second. God, this is so annoying. It's the first time I'm live streaming. But uh, let me see. I should be able to. Oh, yeah. OK, wait one second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ta-da. It should be uh, sharing the screen right now. And I'm going to Google. This is what we call Rahu. See? This is a Dutch thing that we have. This is what I'm eating, see? But I, I, I don't I have no idea what it's called in English. So do, do any of you know the English word for this stuff? I am not that fluent in English. I don't know these names of random dishes. See? But it's like it's meat and uh, mushrooms. And then in Dutch, it's uh, pretty popular during Christmas, really. Cool, huh? I can uh, share my screen with you. That's uh, very nifty. Meat pudding. Ew, that sounds pretty gross. If I was English, I would be disgusted with this. Meat pudding sounds kind of rancid, man. I hope you guys are having a, a nice holiday, too. Well, this may surprise you, but right now, I don't have any moths. Zero moths 
And that's because it's winter, man. So uh, I take a little uh, break from my hobby. So I literally have zero moles at the moment. Thanks, Isabella. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, it's basically something like that. I have really no clue what to call it. So uh, my English is not that good. I uh, look very fluent in English on YouTube, but that's be because uh, before I record a video, I'm always studying the words, what to say. But now I'm live streaming. I randomly have to think of the words and sometimes very obscure words. Uh, I don't know them. So uh, especially not for uh, random dishes. Uh, I have been invited to go on TV uh, next year, actually, in the Netherlands. But it was postponed, postponed because of the coronavirus. But uh, I should hit them up. I was invited to go on a TV show in the Netherlands one time. Uh, that being said, I actually, I like social media more than TV. I think TV is a little bit outdated, man. It's uh, old. Oh, my mom is feeding me, by the way. Yeah, bring it. So, okay, my mom is giving me food. Yes, let me finish this for a moment. Yes, I have. I thought about doing that. But um, I fucked them up. I failed to greet them several times. So that's why there's no episode about them yet. For me, they're difficult to breathe, honestly. Okay, one moment, guys, one moment. Okay. So behind the scenes, my mom, she agreed to feed me during the live stream. So I finished my food. So here, I can exchange it for new food here. Thanks, mom. Wow. Look at this. How luxury, ladies and gentlemen. Hola, Miss Coppens. Yeah, here. Look, guys, she made a steak. What is it? Um, looks like this is uh, like beans wrapped in bacon. So, yes, uh, first Bart Coppens uh, mukbang video is official. Consume. Yes, definitely. No, why should I meet them? No, that, that species, uh, I have no clue what it is. It's recently described, so... If you can, if it's described recently, then there's probably not somebody randomly distributing them online. So no, I haven't. And uh, it's not a priority for me because I have to see if these new species are valid. So, uh, damn, now I'm hungry. Well, you should eat something too, my man. Maybe it's a different time zone for you. Okay. Let me stick this in my mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Here, it's look, it's like this uh, bacon, and oh, it's asparagus. Asparagus, I think. See, it's uh, it's asparagus with. I guess it's bacon. It's kind of meat, but the fancy kind of bacon. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I like moths more than butterflies, but I will try to breed more butterflies for you guys. So, um, Namaste, Sandex, is that uh, correct? Right? That's uh, in India, right? You say Namaste. There you go. Okay, let me eat, guys. Otherwise, it will be uh, cold. Yes, bacon asparagus. Cool, huh? Okay, wow. Somehow, eating really feels awkward in front of a camera. I don't know how people do it, like these mukbangers, Nicado Avocado. How do they eat in front of a camera without feeling embarrassed? Um, well, I'm actually doing nothing at the moment. Nothing. Zero. And that's because I'm on very convenient coronavirus government benefits. Thank you, daddy government. At least for the next few months, I don't have to work because of the coronavirus. Uh, I uh, have a company. And um, 
the government where I live is uh, compensating companies for the losses. Yes, definitely. I'm going to devour some uh, noodles soon, like Nicocado. Yeah, man. They are protected. All bird, let me get this straight. All bird wing butterflies are protected. All, all bird wing butterflies. You need a permit to have them. Don't forget it, because you, you will get fucked by the government. They are uh, Cites species, the genus Ornithoptera, Ornithoptera, Trogonoptera, and Troides. Protected. Doesn't matter what species, protected. Don't buy them without a permit. There will be legal repercussions. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, my mom, she's uh, behind the scenes cooking right now. She's doing her best. You know, my mom, since she was on YouTube, she likes to be on YouTube now. Maybe uh, the attention. She liked it a bit too much. Let me see you. Uh, well, it depends on what you do. It's not a good idea to go to a random country. Look, listen, listen, listen. If you want to study insects in a different country, the first thing you have to do is look up the local laws, right? So if you have to ask me this question, it's not a good idea to go there. Some countries have very strong laws when it comes to trapping moths and disturbing wildlife, but also natural reserves. So if you go to a random tropical country and you go black lighting, this, uh, this can be a crime if you do it on protected lands, right? If you do it in a national reserve. You have to really study. Before I worked in Cambodia, I studied the local wildlife laws pretty well because you don't want to make a mistake and go to a different country and risk uh, doing something that's illegal. Uh, di different countries have different laws. No, I don't think so. He would eat all the moths, I think. Uh, I mean, these moths, they do look pretty tasty. They smell good. Look, guys, I'm getting fatter and fatter. Oh, man. My mom even um, gave me vegetables. How healthy. It's probably the most vitamins I had in a year time. Hey, what's up there, Tim? Hope you're doing well, man. It's too bad I couldn't go to London this year. Hmm. I've considered getting different pets, uh, but my problem with tarantulas is uh, I like tarantulas, but they live for such a long time. I read these tarantula species, they live for like, uh, what is it, 10, 20, 30 years. That's a bit too much for commitment uh, for me. I like uh, moths because they have short and fast life cycles. So you can have a big diversity of species in a short time. I have honestly no idea, man. It's uh, difficult uh, to really pick a favorite. So yeah. Okay, guys, I have to eat for a second. I, the problem is there are so many species. Choosing a favorite is impossible for me. Because my tastes, they also um, vary a lot, depending on the time and season. Hey, greetings, Dr. Victor. You have a nice uh, channel, too. So um, how do I say uh, happy holidays in uh, Ukrainian? Hmm, I forgot. I should know some basic Russian. But... Да, я изучал русский язык, потому что никто не может говорить в моем язык, да? Я изучал русский язык э, два хода, и я думаю, это язык очень красивый и интересный. Спасибо. I know some little Russian. I think Russian is a very good language. I think more people from the West should learn it. It sounds uh, pretty beautiful to me. So.
So, um, by the way, Dr. Victor Furself, he has a channel too. He uh, shows insects. I watch his channel too sometimes. So, uh, cheers to you. Well, Tim, no, Tim isn't cringing at this. He's my bro. Yes, this is Twitch speak, man. Poggers. I feel really old when people see this. Mm. That's an interesting question. It's because, um, in my opinion, Russia is Russia is a very big country, and I, I in general, and also the Slavic countries in the West, we don't learn much about it. And I think um, this is a shame, because if you look at politics, Russia is a big country, it's an important country, and we don't know much about the culture and the people. And there's also a big language barrier. So I thought it was very interesting to study it and learn more about the country objectively. So uh, about Russia and also about the culture in Russia. It's kind of like there, it's this very big, big thing, but it gets very little attention. Same with insects. I like, there's a lot of important big things that get little attention in the West. And that's for me motivation to uh, study it. Plus I think the language, it's a good challenge for my brain. It's difficult and uh, it sounds nice. A Greg's sausage roll. Oh, Rachel, you're so quirky. Next time I go to London, you'll have to feed me one, all right? Thank you, uh, Abner. Okay, guys, let me finish my steak here. Yes, very culinary. It's a pepper steak. It has pepper on it. So. Feel free to ask me questions. Um. This is big multitasking for me. Hmm. I don't know. I think I was like seven, six years old. I uh, always put them in plastic containers. All the insects I found outside in my garden. When I was a child, I was putting them in the plastic containers and that counts as keeping insects. And from there, I grow older and older, and I breed more and more insects more professionally. But I started with really, really young. Yes, I have one parrot. I don't show him on YouTube very much, but I have a pet parrot. I raised him myself. So, um, Here. Sometimes you can hear him scream in the background of my video. I have no idea what this species is. Never heard of it. I don't know all the species from top of my head. I like moths a lot, but there is nobody who knows them from the top of my mind. So maybe I have uh, I have one Hemare species from the Netherlands. So there is that. But what Hemare alania is, never. Uh, I don't know about them. Um, when I breed moths, I never uh, release them back to nature because I think uh, if you raise insects in captivity, uh, they are uh, different. Genetically, they are different. In the wild, there is uh, a huge selection going on, sometimes of all the caterpillars. 98% of them die and only 2% become butterfly or moth. In captivity, the percentage is much bigger. So it means the weak, the weak ones, they will survive, the, who are supposed to die in the wild. And they could be more susceptible to diseases and uh, afflictions. So in the end, it can, I believe that re re raising or breeding and releasing a lot of butterflies and moths can be harmful for the wild insects. 
that's not a, I, I think it's not a good way to help them yes if i can it's very easy it depends on the weather my country is very wet and rainy and tropical uh, species sometimes uh, they don't like the cold wet rain so if it's raining for a long time i cannot sleep them because they will get sick from the extreme humidity but in a dry hot summer i love to sleep it's the best and the easiest way okay guys i have to eat some steak mm. i have a very very rare moth from italy the um, italian owlet moth arcanto bramaia europaea is a relic species maybe i can uh, share my screen for a second and look it up let's see arcanto Bra Ma I'm googling for a second, all right? Please uh, forgive me for the awkwardness here. Let's see, share screen. Yes, let me. This one uh, for me is going to be a big highlight. I, I breed them before in the past. Uh, maybe you've seen them on my channel before, but this time I want to show the uh, whole life cycle. This is one of the rarest moths in the world because it's only found on one volcano in Italy, the Monte Vulture. And its entire habitat, the entire species, is only found in a 50 square kilometer area and nowhere else in the world. So the habitat of this species is very small. It's only on the slope of this volcano in Italy and nowhere else in the world. It's also one of the most uh, primitive Brahmaea species. Uh, I hope I can show you the life cycle next year. I'm not sure uh, I will have to succeed. I breed them before, so I think uh, I can succeed with a little bit of luck. Merry Christmas, man. To you too. Hmm, no, not yet. I know them, but um, I have to tell you guys, I have not breed many species of butterfly yet. On my channel, you will see I have many species of moths, but I'm not so good with, I'm not so good with butterflies, but maybe next year that will change because I plan to bring more butterflies to my channel, but I'm a new with them. What's up, Gary? Welcome to the live stream. So we're being quite festive here. Yeah, I know, that's that's a cool flex, huh? It's an achievement. That's really what I want to do with my channel. It's like a library for rare species, yes? Mm. Sorry, man. I, I love to help people. I love to explain to people how to breed certain insects. And I write a guide of how to breed them. I show it in a video, but I am not good with uh, supplying. So I cannot help people with uh, buying the insect. In the past, I've, I've, uh, there was a moment that I was selling them online, but I'm not sure if I like uh, selling insects or helping people with sales. But it's really different. I like using my knowledge and not the commercial side. Oh, I'm raising it right now. Behind the scenes, I am uh, breeding them. Right now. So um, the life cycle should be finished in a few months. And then they're going to be on my channel. Let me see. Okay. Guys, I finished my plate for a second. Good question, but I honestly, I genuinely do not know. Sorry, guys. There are so many species, and every few months I probably have a new favorite.
I'm trying, but uh, for me, they are very difficult to breed, man. The uh, robin moth, they get sick very fast, the caterpillars. So, um, but yeah, next year I will try again. It's trial and error, right? Maybe. My problem is that uh, shipping and selling cocoons is really boring as fuck. Sorry for the rude language, but I was shipping thousands and thousands of cocoons to customers. And it's really stressful and has nothing to do with insects. Of course, I am selling the insects, but it doesn't matter if I'm selling an iPhone, if I am selling uh, whatever, iPads or fucking cocoons, right? It's selling, it's a kind of boring work. All right, guys, one moment, one moment. I have to switch this out. Yeah. Ta-da, look guys. I have a desert too. Whoop. Oh, th thanks. Here, I have a Christmas napkin too. Wow, how epic. And even wine. This uh, should be like a restaurant here, guys. Okay, one moment. This is a bit inconvenient. Okay, let me put this here. Maybe it's, uh, it's better if I twist the camera a little little bit like this there you go now it's more visible right do you guys like the christmas lights by the way i uh, put them up especially for you but to answer your question i really for some reason i really hate selling i really hate selling stuff on the internet it's very stressful uh customers people are very abusive and um unreasonable you have to ship everything very fast because the butterfly pupa they hatch in a few weeks time and uh, for me it had no, uh, my passion my love is for the insects and uh, like selling them online uh, it's not for me to be honest uh it's kind of kind of boring and tiresome and from youtube i get a ton of people who want to get some random species for me that i cannot give them and then they are disappointed and angry Dealing with people sucks and selling things to people sucks and dealing with customers sucks because people, sorry for saying it, but people are dumb. Sure. I bet uh, Mark Rutte, our prime minister, is watching. Wow, uh, my mom gave me ice cream cake, guys. What's this? It's a Santa. Look, it's a chocolate Santa. Oh, wow. I'm going to eat him. One moment. Yes, this um, this happens a lot. I breed thousands of moths, and with a small percentage. A small percentage of them this happens. It sucks, but there's nothing you can do to prevent it. <laughs> really, dude? Are we stooping to this level? Here, I have um, I have a desert for you. Here, you can you can uh, have my toes, okay? <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Yes, I know. <laughs> here, uh, cheers. Uh, here, here goes the alcohol. We're starting to get drunk in a live stream. Yes, Carrie, this is what you've been waiting for. I know, right? This is why you subscribed all those years to finally see my toes. Cheers to that, guys. Um, you know what? I'll send the, the name later on Discord. So uh, tonight you can Google it. It's also on my YouTube channel. I have old videos of them. So, uh, <laughs> well, it, that's good. This is good content for children. Everybody should like uh, my feet, even the youngest kids. Cheers to that. <laughs> there you go. Wow. 
I drink it like it's tequila, but it's wine. So, uh, oh, by the way, this is ice cream, so I should eat it probably, or it's gonna melt. You mean fuck? Yes. It's adult, adult content. Uh oh. I'm so sorry. Don't grow up like me. I'm not a good role model, man. I'm a failed adult. Yes. They should rightfully demonetize me. I deserve it. Hmm. Uh, what's my favorite butterfly? Very difficult question. Very difficult question. Let me think for a moment. Mm. It's probably morpho butterflies. It's very basic, I know. But some morphos are really beautiful, man. Uh oh, please, police. Don't arrest me, the, the kids are watching. Oh God, oh man, oh no. You are going to unsubscribe. Feed crimes, yes. Oh my. So are you guys celebrating Christmas? It's probably one day too early, but uh, I wonder if all of you are stuck at home. Yeah, especially if you have them from the wild, the parasites on those species, it's uh, crazy. It's crazy. Especially the species who will live like in high densities, gypsy moth, processionary caterpillars, full of parasites. Cheers for that, Gary. Well, that's probably because they're wrong. People make mistakes, it's okay. You're allowed to make mistakes. It's because there are several ways to measure size. You can measure wingspan, wing surface area, and the atlas is one of the biggest in surface area and um, white witch in wingspan. But I'm gonna be honest, I think the discussion about what is the biggest uh, species is a boring discussion. Because all these species are pretty big in their own respect. They are fascinating in their own respect. And the difference between them is honestly small. Just compare an Atlas moth with a Hercules moth with a White Witch moth. They are all about the same size. And the difference is not obvious. We are talking about averages here because every individual is different. So this is a complicated discussion. And for me it doesn't change how cool these insects are. It doesn't have to be a competition for me for the biggest. Yes, some of them are very unfortunate. Mm. I um, was selling pupa too early this year, and maybe some of you saw the video with the many atlas moth. And in that video. I was stuck with the cocoons that I could not sell because of the pandemic. No, sorry, I'm uh, not religious. But if you do, go ahead and celebrate it, uh, whatever, whatever uh, holiday you celebrate. But uh, personally, I am not religiously motivated, no. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, I will. That's the plan. Also in the same uh, documentary style, but it does take a long time to film them. That's the main problem. But um, and smaller species are also more difficult to film with my camera because I don't have super good uh, close-ups. Privet, Lubov, Portnaya. Spasiba. I like the video you did on the, oh wait, this one. 
Did you get any gifts for Christmas? No, because it's not Christmas yet. So uh, tomorrow, maybe. But uh, we don't really do big stuff here with Christmas because I'm uh, getting old. Um, it, it was kind of a thing, thing we did when me, we, me and my sister were young. But now that we're older, we don't make a big deal out of Christmas. And to be honest, my parents give me a lot. So I don't always need gifts. They uh, do a lot for me. Yes, I am making many of them at the moment but because it's winter i have to wait for spring uh, many of my moths are overwintering in the cocoon it's very cold outdoors sometimes it's freezing and um, many of the cocoons are hibernating for the next uh, summer and spring and then uh, the life cycles will be finished and i can make many moth cycles episode but uh, yeah winter is so boring Hmm. Yep, that's a really nice one. Hmm, difficult one. I'm not uh, entirely sure. Hmm. I do have these moths that um, hatch very, very early in the year. Let me uh, think. I think it could be like the European emperor moth. Saturnia pavonia, they are often very early. As soon as the first plants are budding, I think it's like uh, in their flight season where I live. It's like, um, I think it's like April, March, very early, Saturnia pavonia. Probably Automeris io. I know it's a very common one. Automeris Io, the uh, Io moth. Super common, but I love them. They're so cute with the yellow, especially the males, and their cute little eyes and their furry legs. It's my favorite. Hmm. Probably only if I go to Madagascar. In captivity. In captivity, uh, this species is impossible to breed if you don't have the host plant, and they only grow in Madagascar. And this host plant is basically impossible to grow in Europe. It's Omphalea. Let me do something brilliant for a second. Let me put this aside, because I finished it anyways. There you go. That's much better, yes. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. Uh, yes. So this is what we're talking about. Kisiridia, uh, yes. Kisiridia rifius, the uh, sunset moth. Most of you probably know it. It's a very, very pretty moth. I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with it. And, um, the, mo the main problem is the thing that they eat. I uh, can show you guys right now here. See, it's a very pretty one. Um, this is what they eat. Omphalea. And this is the host plant of Chrysiridia. The problem is it's not really possible to grow this stuff um, in Europe because the plants only grow a few leaves per year. And it's very difficult to grow in captivity. You need to be a specialist in plants. And it would take anything between five to 10 years to grow enough plants to feed a few caterpillars. Because this plant grows so extremely slow and the seeds are impossible to get. So in theory it's possible, but unless you are a millionaire, forget it. My only option is to go to Madagascar and breed them myself. Otherwise, it probably ain't happening. Uh, oh, forgive Rachel, please. Uh, I, I know her in real life. She's, uh, she's a good person. Don't uh, mind her trolling a little bit. It's allowed. I give her a trolling pass. So uh, let's see. 
I haven't seen Carrie in real life, but uh, I talk to her sometimes on WhatsApp. So in that sense, yeah, I do know her. Let's answer a question. Oh, wait, that's not a question. It's a statement, but uh, good luck. Hi, Paulina. I see that you're here, too. Yeah, it's very easy, probably. So uh, and many people have read them before, too. It's not uh, that special. A few years ago, uh, they were for sale a lot. So maybe it will happen again in the future. So uh, they feed on... Uh, they, they, they feed on uh, on uh, Tsuga, by the way. I'll show you. Share screen. This is the host plant of Nitufiri. This is what they have to eat. Hemlock. Ah, the English name is Hemlock. This is the host plant of this uh, moon moth. And uh, in fact, many people have breed them before. It's uh, not that difficult to get. It just depends on the time, I guess. Oh, look, it's a love story. I ship it. See? Wow. How cute. Probably, um, well, anything from the P family. So uh, probably Inga. Uh, pff, stuff like that. Visteria. Yep, exactly. Anything from that family is a good choice. You have to study the species a bit, but um, I'm going to show you some uh, morpho um, host plants right now. One thing morpho butterflies generally like is mucana. I have no idea of the English name. Mu I don't know. It's, it's, it's this stuff. This is excellent for morpho butterfly, mucana. Uh, this is what many species eat in the wild as well. And another suggestion is inga if you can grow it. You go. This is uh, another. Wow, a lot of girls in Google. So um, the plant, you know, that's a pretty good one for the morpho butterfly. Of course, you have to research it per species because they have. Uh, they have a different preference per species. There you go. That's much better. Who was getting tired of that? There you go. Okay, so the uh, the feeding my uh, my fat ass part is over, so we can uh, just continue to answer some questions. Oh, I have a very nice haircut because of the hat. Um, I don't know what happened, but it's okay, man. Don't feel uh, insecure. We're doing well, right? Yes, they do. Yes, here. See. Carry, 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 come here. Oh man, I, I really hate what my hair looks like right now, but it's okay. I can have my ragged look. Yeah, many of them, many Saturnids, many Sphingids, many hot moths. Wait, let me, I have an idea. Maybe this is chill. Here, that's better. So the you guys like my Christmas sweater, by the way? It's pretty cool, huh? Eh? Oh, man, this is uncomfortable. Damn, never mind. Yeah, that's that's like 200 host plants, man. I cannot name all of them. It's an incredible amount. Uh, Santol uh, is what I like in the wild. Uh, guava. Uh, we've seen a, there's like 3 million trees. Also, custard, apple, and nona is what they really eat. Huh? Mad? Why would they make me mad? I don't know. I, I don't, don't really have uh, disagreements with them that make me mad. <laughs> If they make you mad, maybe it's not a good hobby for you, man. Let's see. Yeah, they were uh, they were one of my first. So there you go. Just trying to make a good setup. Okay, let's uh, put my my cock hat bed on. Back on. There we go. Wow, so sexy, ladies and gentlemen. 
Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, he is. So maybe if somebody here is a moderator, feel free to block it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me see. Sure. Maybe you have to do it like this. Titanic pose. Okay, I'm trying to find a better angle, maybe. It's more convenient for me. Uh, all of them. I don't have a particular favorite, to be honest. No, it's not in my opinion. I think uh, Peatland is uh, a bit boring, but uh, it's the pinnacle of uh, Northern Europe, I guess. It has a rich cultural history, yay! But still, uh, give me the rainforest any time of the day. So, right. <clears throat> no, I know, I'm only good at uh, killing them, as in terminating their life. Yes. Well, I don't know any Hebrew, man. What should I say? How do I even pronounce it? Uh, well, I guess it has rain, and I guess it has forest. So maybe technically you're right. I don't have any moths. I am literally I have zero, no moths at all. Oh, hi there, Mossad. Shalom. Oy vey. Is that uh, good enough? Is this going to make you happy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them. You can probably find them on my channel. I don't have really a good video about them yet because my old videos are a bad quality, but uh, yeah. I do. Oh, uh, look, guys, Paulina is happy because I said shalom. I hope I um, made your year. Merry Christmas, uh, by the way, Paulina. Of course I will. Um, I'm going to make this moth cycle with as many species as possible, to be honest. But it takes me a lot of time, you know. Have you ever tried to film the life cycle of one insect? It's months and months of work filming them every day. And uh, so every year I can make like 10 life cycles at best, maybe a bit more. But uh, it's going to take a lot of time to film all the common species. Mm, it's probably, let me show you. I can show you. Uh, it's called uh, the Garden Tiger. This is really my favorite from the Netherlands, this one. Uh, they're very common, but I like them because uh, every moth is different. The pattern on the wings of each of these moths is completely unique, like a fingerprint. That's what I really like uh, about this species in particular. It was also a favorite from my childhood. Uh, really, I have no idea, to be honest. Anything. So, uh, anything I can get. They were on my channel. I already have uh, videos about them. It's probably going to take a very long time before I can breed them again. Very long time. But uh, maybe. No, I have never seen... Um, I've never seen one alive before i've seen many dead ones in collections very rare species but never a live one so for that i think i really have to travel maybe to the alps uh, to the mountains so uh, yeah that, that would be pretty cool probably because i'm a noob that's why and uh, they are a little bit difficult 
maybe next year someday it's gonna happen it's trial and error for a lot of species you know sometimes uh, you fail you improve you fail you improve and eventually you uh, get them right yep yep they are and I think it's even a special subspecies you have in the uh, that you have in the United States it's like Artiacaia americana I believe so if you can breed them from the US that would be pretty interesting uh, yes I have uh, for context Paulina is from Guatemala sometimes I have species from there well uh, I can probably import them if I had like five thousand dollar to spare because it costs a lot of cash to import them to get the permits to order a large amount of cocoons to get the veterinary inspection to do the shipment cost thousands of dollars to get them to euro probably due to regulations and uh, that's a bit pessimistic but maybe someday somebody will uh, bring them to Europe. Who knows? Oh, don't feel embarrassed. My uh, native language is not English, too. So uh, I also have to learn uh, many new words constantly. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, uh, when I was very young, I was a mantis breeder, too. I kept a lot of mantis when uh, before uh, I was filming everything for YouTube. I was breeding uh, Popa Spurca, Hirodula membranacea, Spodomantris lineola. I had so many mantis species. But this is all before I start my YouTube channel, so I don't have them on camera. But uh, yeah, I, I, am, uh, I have experience with breeding mantis in the past. Maybe. I'm not a big fan of hybrids, so uh, I do it when I'm really bored. I prefer to breed um, pure species if I can. But uh, yeah, maybe if I have uh, a male and a female that are single of one species, I will try to combine them. So yeah, I started out as a mantis breeder many years ago. That's uh, how I started my hobby. Um, and uh, mantis are still one of my favorite insects. I don't breed them anymore, but I'm very happy if I see them in the wild. And it's cool to see pictures of people who breed them sometimes. There are some really awesome looking species out there, very fascinating pets. I recommend them. Uh, maybe. I haven't... Um, for the, for the last uh, five years, I've only been breeding moths and uh, not many other insects. But uh, maybe sometime when I want to try something different, I will try a katydid or a mantis. Ah, so you have 13 mantis. Yeah, I, um, I was actually a very big mantis enthusiast in my teenage years when I was 16 years old. I was a, mainly a mantis uh, fanatic. I was not obsessed with moths at all. I don't know why this changed, but when I grew older it changed. But uh, I had orchid mantis too when I was young. And I also had these uh, bark mantis, uh, Theopompa I think was the genus and uh, Philocrania, stuff like that. Yeah, it is, but you need artificial light, you need warmth, and you need host plant. So you probably need some uh, something like a citrus plant and a space to give them artificial light, probably UV light if you can. And of course, a suitable host plant, Croesia or citrus, definitely. So uh, let me see if there's other questions. Yeah, definitely I'm a mantis. Uh, let me scroll up for a second, see if I missed anything. If you have questions. Okay. 
Yeah, I was actually I was uh, planning to do a tree ops too. They're pretty fascinating uh, arthropods and uh, easy to read. They have a fast life cycle, pretty easy to obtain in general. So uh, and I hope that the people watching this right now are uh, also having a good time despite the uh, crisis, despite the corona bullshit going on right now, the uh, whole pandemic. It's a bit saddening. And uh, that's the reason I really wanted to do a live stream. Because uh, maybe you can cheer people up, right? Good luck. It's uh, expensive to have a greenhouse here, especially because of the heating. But uh, if you have uh, some cash saved, it's uh, very feasible. Hmm. Well, I like. I think I like all insects, really. Literally all kinds of insect. Um, but I already mentioned mantis before, I guess. Whee! Uh, yeah, praying mantids. I like uh, what I also like are fireflies or any but does anything that's bioluminescent. I think that's so fascinating how insects can produce like the artificial uh, light. Well, it's not artificial light; it is perfectly valid light. But uh, bioluminescent insects are very fascinating to me. Um, mantids. Let me think. What else am I happy to see in the wild? Uh, I think uh, I think I do like, uh, of course, stick insects. Phasmatodea are a very nice family, and uh, there's a big breeding community for them. I don't keep them anymore, but uh, I still have a fascination for them. They are cool uh, colors, they're cool shapes. Well, thanks, Carrie. You made uh, 2021 better for me too, so I'll return you. The compliment. Same for you, Tyler. Thanks uh, for being here. Let me see. Oh, that's unfortunate because I have a break too during this time of the year. Um, I'm going to take a break from YouTube in January and I think February. So you have to watch uh, old videos, probably. But when I come back, I'll have some very cool stuff. Hmm. Well, 30, 40,000 subscribers would be nice. I'm not sure if I can double the amount again. And also upgrade my equipment. I, a time-lapse camera, maybe, uh, or a microscope camera, so I can show the very small detail, like um, caterpillars coming out of the eggs or a close-up of, uh, of the scales on the wings. It would be cool to have a microscope camera to show people all these small little details. It's uh, pretty cool. I'm uh, very glad to hear that. That's uh, what I'm trying to do, after all. So uh, It's called meconium. meconium, and it's a metabolic waste product. Newborn babies have this too. Yes, newborn human babies have the same after they are born. It's basically, um, well, when you have, uh, when, 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 when stem cells are forming a new body, it's a, it's a chemical process and it creates waste, right? A waste that cannot be excreted. Uh, when, when a caterpillar is transforming into a butterfly, they cannot defecate in the pupa. Uh, it's, it's not actually excrement because it's, uh, it's a different kind of byproduct. It's not a byproduct of their food consumption, their metabolism. It's a byproduct of the formation of the new tissues of the body when the metamorphosis happens. And some of them, they store it in their abdomens and they expel it shortly after they, uh, they emerge from the pupa. So uh, I see, yes, I see too. Okay, let me see, guys. Did, you, did I miss anything? So um, thank you all for watching. It's my first uh, live stream I've ever done. If it's a success, I will consider doing more next year. Maybe I have to even buy uh, a better webcam because uh, I have this uh, shitty old webcam. But if people like live streams, 
I will buy a more expensive webcam to upgrade the quality so you can have high definition. Um, I have seen a lot of nice tattoos. I saw a lot of cool uh, tattoos with butterflies and moths. Uh, that being said, I don't think I will ever get a tattoo myself. I'm not sure why, but to me, it feels really permanent to have a tattoo on my body. So I don't like the idea of having tattoos on myself. Sorry for that, but uh, I'm probably never going to do that. Sure, it's a pretty cool one. I've, uh, I've seen people breed them in a butterfly farm where I worked. And if you have Passiflora species, the one they like, they will uh, probably breed very easily for you. Uh, hmm, it's a difficult one. I honestly, I don't look up to YouTubers. That sounds stupid because I'm a YouTuber, but YouTubers are not my role models. I know that sounds uh, pretty weird. There are some good channels with insects in them. But entomology is not about YouTube. There's many biologists who I look up to. There's many researchers who I look up to. Uh, many breeders, scientists I look up to. But I don't think there is YouTubers who I look up to. Sorry for that. That's because uh, no matter how educational you make it, at the end of the day, YouTube is always a bit uh, superficial. And I'm really more of a big fan of the natural sciences, biology. Even though I do YouTube myself, I don't think it's a career to look up to. It sounds harsh, but it's true. Well, anything. You can uh, work in a museum, in a museum collection. You can work at a butterfly farm. You can become a scientist. You can become an entomologist. There are so many things. It's probably very difficult to uh, make money with butterflies and moths. It's because these animals have a very low economical value. So, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to market something and make money with something that uh, has very, very, very little uh, significance to our economy. So it's going to be hard. But if you study biology uh, at college level, maybe, you can get in a research position. You can do maybe conservation. Yeah, I can show. I don't know if I'm allowed to show him on YouTube. I'm gonna do it anyway. But uh, now I don't think I can find him on the internet, to be honest. But uh, there's one breeder uh, and scientist who helped me a lot, and he raised a lot of uh, Saturnids. His name is, I can show him. If I look up to someone, it's probably Mr. Kirby Wolf. Um, now, there, it's difficult to find something about Kirby on the internet because uh, he was before my time. Uh, he was one of the biggest uh, researchers on Saturni Day, also one of the biggest breeders. And he's basically the kind of person I want to grow up as. Um, I emailed him in the past. He is very kind. He is very inviting. He is probably the most experienced Saturnid breeder that ever existed, in my opinion. So uh, shout out to Mr. Kirby Wolf. I know he is uh, not on social media, so I don't think he is going to see this. But uh, just in case. But his work uh, is uh, not on Google. You cannot find his work on the internet. But he raised uh, all of the rarest Saturnids in the world many years ago, when uh, before I was born. So there's a big generation difference here. But uh, he was doing the same thing that I am right now, I think, maybe on a higher level, more scientific. But um, I relate to that uh, person. Oh, those are really nice. Show us some pictures uh, when you have them next year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, feel, fr feel free to uh, ask me some questions, guys, because I think in like uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to wrap it up. So I give you 15 minutes. Ask me all the questions you have. 
Uh, well, it depends because uh, it's not legal for many people to buy insects online. So my recommendation is very limited. Because when I like a certain species, uh, then uh, the, uh, my viewers cannot buy the species I recommend. Because most of them are in, the, are in the United States or Asia, where it's illegal to buy exotic insects online. But I really like the Artsia kaya, the garden tiger moth. If you can get that one, breed them. They are so fascinating. I'm making a video of them right now. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'm not on Discord uh, that much. Sorry, I should be more on my own Discord. I have my own Discord server. Um, but I'm a bit of a boomer. I don't really know how Discord works. I come there from time to time to post uh, jokes, uh, some memes, stuff like that. But uh, I should use it more. It's probably difficult to contact me over there. But, uh, well, guys, I, uh, I've enjoyed it so far. If you have any questions, I think uh, let's, uh, let's do 10 more minutes. Sounds reasonable. All of them. Yeah, they're pretty nice butterflies. If you have a, like the banana tree, they will uh, like to eat it. The caterpillars, yay. <laughs> yeah, so are you. Let's see. Mm, well. I've only, uh, I'm not sure if where I've been to uh, counts as rainforest. I've been in very big forests in Cambodia, but uh, I don't know if they are technically rainforest. I don't think so. It's because Cambodia has very strong dry season and a very strong rainy season. They are tropical forest, but I don't think they, if they classify as tropical rainforest. But the coolest forest I see was in Laos in Cambodia. Forests are so big there, so beautiful. Uh, I would love to return there someday with my uh, high definition camera and show all of you on YouTube how beautiful it is there. The ecosystem, so many butterflies and moths. I have never been to America. I have never been to South America. I have never been to Africa. I want to visit all these places in my lifetime, but of course, traveling costs a lot of money. I don't know if it's going to happen, but if it is, I'm going to show it on YouTube for sure, for sure, for sure. It's one of the things. Yes, it's uh, one of the things that causes uh, deformation. But there are so many things that can cause deformation. Uh, reduced fatality, inbreeding, recessive genes, uh, mechanical damage, fungi, viruses. All of this can cause deformation, even stress during the pupil stage. So it's very hard to pinpoint the exact uh, factor that has led to the deformation. That's an interesting question. I don't think you guys can guess what my own favorite video is, can you? I think my own favorite video is my London video. I know that sounds stupid because it's not about insects. But for me, it was exciting to make the travel vlog, to travel to London. I love London. And uh, the people I show there in my video, in my London video, are random people I, I met right there through YouTube. So. Uh, I guess the reason it's my favorite video is because uh, it's because of the experience attached to it. Of course, breeding moths is exciting to me. I like it, but I do it all the time. I breed moths constantly, full time. And going to London for me, it was a big thing, and it was a good memory. I like to rewatch the video sometimes to uh, to relive the experience. Uh, it's not so much the video that I liked. It was more the, like the experience attached to the video that make it my favorite video. But yes, it's uh, the London video. Yes, I will try. I will try to raise monarchs. I have a big problem where I live in the Netherlands. We don't have the uh, food plant. 
die, uh, de Asclepias, die uh, silk plant. It's in Dutch we call it silk plant, but in English we call it milkweed. So sorry for saying uh, silk plant. Yes, in Dutch we call it zijde plant. So in my in my language, we literally call it silk plant. That's why I confuse the milkweed with the silk plant. But in my country, we don't have this plant. So yes, I'm going to try to breed the monarch. But for me, it's difficult because I manually have to grow all the food plant myself. And you people uh, in America, you have a lot of uh, milkweed around you, uh, big numbers because it's like a weed. But for me, it's extra difficult because I have to grow all the milkweed myself. So uh, for me, it's an expensive project and very time consuming. I'm not very good with plants. But uh, if, if, it, if it works out, you're going to see it on my channel, of course. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Hey, welcome back. If you want to ask me a question, right now is the good moment. Because uh, we've been streaming for one hour and 60 minutes. So in about 10 minutes, I'm going to stop. I also noticed that uh, the activity is lower. Some people are leaving the stream. I already finished my dinner. Uh, we can hang out, we can chat, it's fun. If you have a question, write it right now in the comments. This is your moment. Um, well, Kerry, that's not up to me, for me to decide. Of course, my answer is always going to be yes. If you ask me if you should get anything, my answer is always yes. <laughs> All right, so every time you see a caterpillar and you are in doubt, Think about me in your mind saying yes, 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 yes. And then you can replay the audio for yourself mentally and do it. Of course, why not? Why, why, why wouldn't I think so? They're pretty nice. No, never. Never as far as I know. Nope. So, uh, yeah, not sure what to say. Nobody did it. Yes, this is very common. In uh, Europe, we have uh, we have a hog moth even that overwinters as an adult. It's pretty cool. It's the hummingbird hog moth, Macroglossum stellatarum. And um, I show it on my channel before. Um, but uh, it's 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 very common. And what's interesting is one of the few hog moths. That over winter, as sorry, let's see. I'll, uh, I will have to look macro, macro, closen. Do you see this, guys? Is it working? This the screen share. This one. Do you see it? This moth is very interesting. It's one of the only hog moths that over winter as uh, as an as, as an adult. In winter, these hog moths, they stop flying, they hide in the bushes, and they overwinter as an adult, this species. It's pretty cool because for a hog moth, for a sphingid, this is very rare. Uh, sub Maya, welcome to the stream. Ah, so you're not at work after all, huh? Did you ever, to, no, 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 not yet, not yet, but uh, I plan to. It's uh, for, for next year on my to-do list, if I can. So uh, I will try my best to grow the food plant, to buy the pupa online and try to raise these pieces, if I can. Yay, you're free from the wage. Slavery, congratulations. Wow, is this a Poggers reference? Uh, wh what movie you mean? I'm making so many videos at the moment. So it's probably going well. Uh, I'll show you. Let me share the screen for a second. Let me share the screen. Oh, yes. Wait, what? Ah, okay. 
It's, uh, let me think of the name. It's Sestrum. Castrum is actually. I should pronounce it in the Latin way. It's Castrum, not a Sestrum. This is the host plant of the uh, Greta Otto, the uh, glasswing butterfly. It's, um, it's a type of nightshade, type of nightshade uh, from the tropics. And this is what the glass wings uh, feed on. Yes, I can tell you. I can tell you right now. I don't have any experience. That's my experience. I don't have any. Uh, pretty well, I guess. My mouth is a bit dry. Probably need to get a glass of water because I've been talking nonstop for one and a half hour. Doing my first uh, live stream. I hope that you are doing well uh, too, uh, Tim. Over there on island. Yeah. Probably sounds creepy to the viewers that I know everybody's identity in the chat. But uh, Tim is uh, somebody I know very well. Hope you're doing well, mate. God, I hope so. I hope you will bring me some, uh, some moss. Because I'm dying here in winter. Really now. Well, I think we are uh, we are out of questions, really, or not? Oh no, we got some new ones. Oh yes, this happens uh, commonly in the uh, genus of uh, Heliconius. The uh, adult butterflies they will uh, try to mate with the females when they are very close to uh, hatching. So yes, it uh, happens frequently. Uh, it's going to be uh, finished uh, in June. Sorry if I didn't understand your question before. For some reason, I was confused. But now I understand what you mean. Yes, the movie will be released, I think, in June. June, July. So it's going to be a long, 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 long time. Um, I have a very cool behind-the-scenes footage of me uh, working with the camera crew. And we had thousands of, uh, of uh, moths for the, for, the, for the production of the movie. So, yeah. Native to my country? Oh, yes. I have many. I have the garden tiger moth. I uh, have the Saturnia bavonia, the one that uh, you really like. So the, the typical uh, small emperor moth from uh, my country, too. I have some European uh, hog moths as well. Like, uh, I don't know the English name. It's called the elephant hog moth. So yeah, I have some cool stuff prepared for uh, next year. Oof. Yeah, well, lens uh, are very expensive. That's the problem. Uh, but yes, if I can, I will try to get one with, uh, with better zoom, if I have the funds. Uh, well, my advice is if you are if the species is native, follow the native temperature, really. Because um, the optimal temperature for, for any insect is the temperature of their natural environment. And if you found it locally uh, around you in your garden, then my advice is just, um, just, just, just uh, subject it to the native environment, the native temperatures, they should be perfect. Oh, yes, I definitely will. It's not really a rare species, so I can probably get it easily in the future. It's uh, not a problem for me. Well, good luck. Hmm, I will, uh, I will try. It was more of a humorous video. It was a silly one, bit of an exception. But I made it on my secret uh, second channel. Yes, I have a second channel. Not many people know this, but uh, I have one for silly videos. Not yet. Damn, I forget every year to, uh, to obtain them. It's Acacia. You know the kind? Acacia and also Dalilium. So um, I th I'll show you on Google. The Liam show you uh, share screen. Uh, 
This is the house plant of the Eudemonia, Dallium, but also just simply Acacia, really. You probably know Acacia, it's a very common plant. So there you go, here you have the host plant. So, uh, see, no, nobody does. Especially not if in the, you're in the United States, you can forget it. But you can buy specimens online. So uh, the eggs they hatch in only a few days' time. Even me in Europe, uh, the, the eggs uh, sometimes hatch and die before they arrive to me. So in America, is even longer distance from Africa, so it's probably never going to happen, on top of being illegal. So no, it uh, almost never happens. Well, there don't have to be many species, right? Why, why is, why is it, uh, why is it a problem if there's not many species in a genus, right? I mean, that's that's not a problem. It's pretty normal for a certain genus to have one, two, three, four species. It's uh, very common. So even uh, even if new species have not been described. Um, the fact that there's not many species in one genus doesn't mean that there should be more. Taxonomy is just uh, artificial classification. No, impossible. 100% impossible. Well, there's, I, I get a lot of questions, guys, but here's the thing. Um, the amount of species you can get in captivity are very limited, right? The majority of Saturnids, there's like 2,000 species, are not stuff that's in the hobby that you can order online. So you guys are asking a lot of questions. Can I get this species? Can I get this species? Can I get this species? The answer is probably no, because uh, like 90% of the moths are not and are never going to be in the hobby. I know that sucks, but that's how it works. The hobby market is very small and very limited, and it's not going to give you any random species you like. Um, that's probably going to stay that way. There's, uh, you know, the the hobby is uh, is restricted to just the most common and easy to read stuff. Um, no, I don't know that. I think they are one of the most common predators of the uh, adults. But I think the most common uh, killer, like the highest mortality of uh, butterflies and moths, it comes from stuff like viruses, like parasites. That's the biggest killer. Um, and of course, uh, birds and bats, vertebrates, are major predators, but usually only for the adults, yeah. But uh, when, when we consider the whole life cycle of this of these species, um, the biggest mortality rate is usually because of pathogens and viruses. Yeah, they have been many times, in fact. And they've been bred many times, too. And I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm going to breed them, too, sometime. So uh, some places in Asia, they can be common if you know the right place. And people will probably bring them to Europe when that happens, but uh, not to America. Oh, yes, I am uh, working on this still. And the video is one of my biggest videos uh, so far. I think it will be finished around February or March. I've been working on the Samia video for about uh, 12 months, and it's still in production. It's going to be a really special video. You'll have to wait and see. It's, for, it's also one of the longest videos I make on my channel before. It's going to be a really, 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 really big, big video. But you guys have to be patient. I think it's going to be February or March before I can release it, the final uh, product. Well, I breed them, and I sell the eggs. That's what happened. 
straight answer, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I created a hybrid and um, I paired the hybrids. The eggs didn't have a very high hatch rate, unfortunately. But uh, I sold them. I traded some of the eggs to other breeders and it was a very special hybrid. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm glad, I'm happy that you guys uh, are excited for this video because uh, I am excited too for this video. It's uh, really uh, probably one of my most ambitious one. I, uh, in this video, I'm going to show three different bloodlines of Samia who are different. And in the end, I make a hybrid. So it's basically four life cycles in one episode. And on top of that, I uh, did some special stuff behind the scenes. I uh, have some real silk samples of these moths that I can show you. So yeah, that's going to be a big video, but the big videos take a very long time to make. Yeah, they're actually for my parents. Oopsie doopsie. See this? I think it's uh, Phalaenopsis or something. This is uh, my parents, my parents' orchid. They uh, bought it. It's actually not my hobby, but yeah, there's a lot of orchids uh, back here. Nice flower, huh? There you go. Some pretty nifty plants here. Hmm. Yes, I can probably uh, probably show you a few. Let's see. Um, let me open up a new tab that's uh, safe to share. Let me see. Oh, wow, it's my own face. Let me see first. Okay, black moss, right? Black moss. Well, this one comes to mind. The uh, Cionotus silk moth, Eupacaria caleta. There you go. If you want a really nice uh, black moth, this is probably one of my favorites. There's a lot of uh, moths who have dark shades, but interestingly, purely black moths are sometimes a bit rare. Most of them are gray or brown or slightly black, but completely black moths, it doesn't happen very often. But uh, you can uh, see Calo. Well, of course, we all know Calosamia promethea. It's a very common species USA. The males are black. Females are kind of diarrhea brown. Oops, it's inappropriate language. There you go. Males of this one are pretty cool. Huh? So uh, here's your uh, cool uh, gothic moths for your uh, art piece. So uh, let me think, do I know any other black ones? Hmm, to be honest, it's kind of limited. Mm, I try to think of more examples, but um, most of them in my mind turns out that uh, they are really brown, more brownish. So like finding a really, 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 really black moth can be a bit difficult. Let's see. Mm. Let's see. There was a Lucanella species. I don't know the name for a second. It was really nice and black. Maybe it was this one. Oh, yes, this is very... Well, is this black? Does this count as black? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe if we go to the Bold Browser. Bold. Bold Browse. Browser. Lucanella. Oh, man. I hate this keyboard. There we go. Bold Browser. Lucanella. Genius. I think in this genus there was a really nice one that was uh, like almost uh, black. Ah, there you go. It's this one. Lucanella genera. Sorry if I uh, I'm ramble a little bit sometimes, but uh, when I'm searching stuff on Google, it always distracts me a little bit. Lucanella uh, genera. Oh well, it was the same species after all. These can be dark, but I guess it doesn't count as black. They're really beautiful, though. 
let's see really now maybe it's because of the light i don't know are they now well we got a few here um unfortunately the other orchids here are not blooming so let's see i, I do have one here with flowers i think this one here and um this one has flowers too it's more like a weird uh, violet pink see but again this is not my hobby it's uh, my parents my mom and dad take uh, care of these orchids but um what's funny is in my country there has wild orchids in nature maybe next year i can uh, show them on youtube uh, in my country has a small number of wild orchids. They're very difficult to find, but I know a place where they grow. Uh, they are protected species, so uh, I cannot put them in a pot like this. But maybe I can find them in nature next spring and show them on YouTube if it's interesting. Let me see. Uh, I know the Dutch name for one of them is... Uh, just see oh yeah i'll show you a, a, a wild orchid we have in the netherlands see this this is one orchid we have in my country it's um it's it's a rare one i think it's not easy for me to find orchids here in nature but i've seen them a few times let's see orchids of the netherlands I, uh, here you see some um, wild orchids, I guess. I don't know if the, all of these are from my country. They should be. I think I've seen this one before. See? Uh, this is some examples. Well, i am got to be honest. I am not a botanist. So I have no clue if uh, Google is correct. And it's actually showing me species from my country right now. I just Googled orchids from the Netherlands, and it showed me this on Google. I've uh, seen some similar species before in the nature, so I can confirm that they are here. Uh, but if I want to make a video about them next year, I have to do some research myself. Maybe, uh, maybe I will uh, show them in nature if I can, but I have to do some reading. I am not very knowledgeable on orchids, so uh, and I don't I don't want to spread misinformation on YouTube. So before I make a video about something, I have to study the subject. But uh, yes, that's that interesting. I don't know. I think there some of them do, but I am not very knowledgeable about orchids. I think. I think I've actually seen some uh, some uh, day flying moths uh, be attracted to orchids in the wild before, but I don't know if they are actually pollinating them. I'll uh, leave this question to uh, somebody who knows more about orchids than me. But I suspect, uh, well, actually, yeah, I know from Africa, South America, a lot of orchids are pollinated by hog moths. Maybe not in Europe, but in the tropics, it's very common for uh, moths to pollinate orchids. In my country, I don't know. Does it happen? Yes, on a massive scale. So, uh, mm, yeah, well, they are, they are hairier. Some of them have like the smooth scales that will help them uh, escape from a predator. The dust is basically scales. Uh, they are flat hairs and they act as a um, uh, dry lubricant which uh, makes them hard to 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 hold down it makes them slippery for predators yes it's pollinated by xanto van uh, morgami i think you heard the story about darwin and the orchid before but this is actually very common uh, for orchids to be pollinated by moths the reason the question confused me because I was only thinking about the orchids in my country. But in the tropics, it happens very often that orchids are pollinated by moths. Happens very frequently. 
but maybe not in uh, Northern Europe. So uh, yes, I seen this too. Exactly, it's this. Uh, it's this type. Um, I think they do pollinate them, maybe, or maybe they like the smell. I think they are pollinators. I don't know. I've seen them feeding from the orchids, but they chill on them, as you say. So uh, I'm, I, I actually don't know. I have to research this a bit more to answer this uh, correctly. So um, let me see. Well, here's my problem. My country only has two species of Saturnidae, only two, and they're very, um, well, they don't fly in urban areas. So yes, I have Saturnidae in my country, but not in my area. But uh, maybe next year I can show the two native species my country has on YouTube, uh, perhaps. We have uh, a low biodiversity when it comes to wild silk moths, though, unfortunately, which is ironic because it's my favorite family in my country. I only have two of them. So it kind of sucks. Hey, uh, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up in a few minutes, really. Feel free to ask me some more questions, which I will answer right now. And after that, I think uh, we can uh, continue another time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys liked the live stream. So I'll just casually chill here. If you guys have any questions, write them down. It's your last chance. It's probably going to be the last live stream for a while. So if you want to ask me anything, write it down. Yeah, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. My country only has two Saturnidae. Only two. It sucks. No, I, I, uh, I've, I've seen uh, almost never seen monarchs in the wild. Uh, I've seen them one time in the Canary Isles and in the Caribbean, but not very much, unfortunately. I know they do this. I read a lot about butterflies and moths. And I know this from literature, but I never seen it with my own eyes. Maybe someday if uh, my channel will grow bigger and I can travel. I use the free version and it's working pretty good now. It's uh, pretty good for a free program. You can, uh, you don't have to install it. It's on the website. Yes, I have, but I am terrible at breeding them. Terrible. I tried to breed beetles many times. I had these uh, big Hercules uh, beetles. I had these uh, African flower beetles. And I try so hard to breed them, but I really suck with beetles. They, uh, I, I accidentally kill them and they don't want to lay eggs or the larva. They die. It sounds very depressing, but it's what happens every time I breed beetles. I'm bad with this group of insects. Hmm, what's the most unusual moth I found in the wild? Hmm, this is a difficult one. Let me think for a moment. What's the most unusual moth I found in the wild? Well, I was, I was moth trapping in Asia and what I really, it's not really, uh, for other people, it's not a, maybe an unusual species, but um, I can show you. Uh, let me share the screen for a second. Let's see, share screen, Melissa Zampa. It's this one. So... Oops, is it working? I think the connection is a bit slow sometimes. Is it sharing the screen? Oh, yes. 
Uh, this is probably one of the most unusual moths I saw in the wild, but it's also a really common species in Asia. So why why is it unusual for me? Well, I was moth trapping in the forest, and the the way this moth, the way it flies in the forest at night, is spectacular. It flies almost like a butterfly very gracefully through the forest. It's really beautiful to see at night. It's almost like a spirit with the long tails and they fly almost like slow motion. It's so beautiful to see this piece in the wild. And for me, it was unusual because the size, it really surprised me to see how big it was in the wild. When you look at pictures on Google, it uh, looks pretty big. But in, to see them in real life, I didn't expect them to be this huge. And for me, this is really a very special species. It was a very special experience to find them. Uh, no, I have. Actually, I only had one can of monster today. Only one. So I, I count that as no. That doesn't count. Maybe if I have 10 cans. <laughs> My channel helped me help you out of depression. Well, I am uh, I'm very glad to hear that. That being said, if you really have a uh, struggle with problems like depression, I'm happy to help. But uh, sometimes you also need more help than uh, just YouTubers, right? So uh, depression is a bitch. Uh, I don't I don't think I have depression, but uh, let's say that I have family members who had it before, not me. I'm not going to talk about them on YouTube publicly because I respect their privacy, but I know from uh, from some of my friends and family that it can be difficult. Uh, not enough. That's that's baby level 10 cans. Try 100 cans. I think it was um, I think it was um, 500 cans, so I was basically peeing nonstop. My kidneys were like a filter, filtering out the pure sugar, which uh, crystallized in my kidneys. No, just kidding. By the way, don't drink too much energy drink because it's really bad for you. Okay, if you I know it's fun to joke about it, but it actually fucks you up. It's uh, pretty bad for your heart to drink too much. It can give you a heart attack. Lot of bad stuff. So uh, now to to seriously ask you answer your question, I think my record was like five, which is a very big number because they are big cans, and uh, I had heart palpitations. It was uh, it's actually not very cool to brag about this because I I think I don't want to discourage this. Lots of young people are watching, and uh, when if I joke about it, like in school, I don't want them to copy it. So they, because some of them maybe want to be like me, and they will start drinking them uh, in big numbers. But it's actually really bad for you. It's terrible for your heart. I'm being serious right now. Don't try it at home, man. It will fuck you up. If you have a weak heart, it can give you heart palpitations or worse. Yeah. Thankfully, I am um, I am not immortal, but most of my viewers are mortals, so they can die from an overdose. Caffeine is pretty toxic and bad for you. I don't recommend it. I had terrible headaches. I had heart palpitations. My hands were shaking. I felt really, really, really sick. Don't uh, do it. It's not going to make you a cool YouTuber like me. So it's going to make you an idiot who destroying his own health. Bad idea. Yeah, maybe we can end up in the hospital together. Ooh. Mm, yeah, careful, man. I, I think you, I know you are young. I know you and me like to make the jokes about drinking 100 cans of monster energy sometimes, but uh, don't take the joke seriously, man. It can, um, it's very terrible for your health and your body. 
I try to detox my mouth. That's a very interesting idea. I don't think I, I ever considered that idea. I will make. A, I am actually making a video about silk fabric. It's uh, going to take a few more months for me to uh, to finish the video. I know I'm making so many videos, I'm making so many promises, and it takes so so much of a, so such a long time for me to upload the videos after all the promises. But I am making one. It's gonna be on my channel someday. I cannot say when. But yes. Why not both? Or why not? Why not neither of them? Drink water, kids. It's really healthy. Yay, water! Water is cool because it makes you pee a lot. That's very entertaining. No, wait, that never happened. Just pretend I never said this. Silk is pretty cool. I have a, a I have a, a cap made of silk for winter on for my head. Uh, it feels very comfortable. It's very. It breathes a lot. You know these uh, organic synthetic textiles. They always they trap the heat. They make my uh, head too warm. Make it sweat. But silk is very comfortable. It lets through the air. Yes, if you want to be an epic YouTuber like me, drink water, children. Let's do the helicopter. Sorry for that. Yes, but that's what makes you cool, right? You know what they say? The, the man who can piss the most is the most masculine. Well, recording it for me doesn't ruin the experience. It only makes the experience better. Because I love to share these moments with viewers. And if it's a beautiful moment for me, it's a beautiful moment for the people who join me. I think it's the opposite. Uh, recording it makes me appreciate it even more. Because I know it's not only me enjoying it. I know there's many people who will also enjoy it together with me online. I know that sounds very cheesy. I know that sounds like a basic Sesame Street kind of reply, but it's true. When I grab a camera, I never feel alone. And all the awesome moments that happen in my life, I don't have to experience them alone. I can share them with people. Meow. <laughs> wow, the stream is going to get... Wait, did, did I miss something? Did I miss something right here? As far as I know... No small bard conferences have been conceived yet. So, uh, and, I, and I pray for the future of humanity that my genes will not spread. I have to keep these genes by myself because I will contaminate the gene pool if I reproduce. Tim, ta ta ta. I'm sure it's a compliment, thank you. I'll pretend I love cats too, just to be empathic to you. But uh, I'm usually not of the creatures of the furry kind. Yes, protect it, Carrie. Be very careful with the willy. <laughs> oh my god, this is going on my channel. Maybe we're being a little silly. So how do I do that? Let's see. I don't know what it looks like, guys. What does it look like? Let me see. Uh, what the hell is it? What? Okay. Really? It's like this. There you go. Are you satisfied? I hope you are. Yeah, that's the death hack, death's head hog moth, death's head hog moth. That's a terrible thing to say with my accent. Death head, death head, death head hog moth, death head hog moth. 
if you know the kind, it's a hard moth with a death's head. And all the gothic people love them for the aesthetic. And because Edgar Allan Poe wrote a poem about them once, there you go. Thanks, Kerry. I uh, really did my best. Yes, it did. It's a legendary moment on my channel. Well, guys, I've been live streaming for two hours. So in five minutes, I'm really going to stop the stream. So I'm going to say bye bye in advance. Five minutes. And then uh, I'm heading out tonight. Bye bye, everyone. We've been streaming for one hour and 55 minutes. So, uh, ah, thank you, thank you. Um, I think in the future uh, we can do more live streams. If, uh, if, if people are positive about live streaming. So, well, men are welcome too, you know. Everybody is welcome in my chat. So uh, one thing I want maybe for, for next year is, um, let's see. I wonder if this is, uh, maybe for next season, I can try to get this. Oh, wow, they're very cheap, man. They're very cheap. Oh, some of them are kind of cheap. Let's see. Maybe I will try to get a really a good webcam. Uh, live streaming equipment. I am not very experienced with this, but um, it would be cool if we had more, more uh, video quality, perhaps. Yeah, sorry, man. Uh, I, I hope I don't leave you alone with, uh, with my children. But... Uh, you know, you know the thing about daddies is uh, daddies need a break too sometimes. Unfortunately, daddies have a lot of biological needs outside of YouTube. Oh, I have a, I have a very uh, cool anecdote for you. Sorry, I'm laughing because it's kind of silly. You know, for that movie, they actually used uh, Manduka Sexta. Uh, the uh, what's the English name for the Manduka Sexta again? I forget the English word for them. I think it's called the tomato hawk moth or something. Um, the tomato hornworm is actually the one they use for this movie. And what they did is they they, they painted skulls on these uh, moths. Not many people know this, but... Um, it was actually legally, it was not possible uh, for them to get death threat hog moths legally in the United States because it's an exotic insect. So what they did is they used a native species of hog moth, the Manduka sexta, and they painted little skulls on them. So in the movie, they look like death threat uh, hog moth. Yeah, it's true. Does it have a nice ring to it, Maya? You know what? I have an idea. I'm going to grab a drink for one moment because I have a really dry throat. And maybe that will give me energy to stream a little bit more, okay? Because uh, it's, it's, um, I don't feel like quitting yet. Maybe we can hang out still for a few moments, but I'm going to grab a drink. Stay here. Give me five minutes to go to the fridge and I can stream a little bit more. What's a nice message to put here uh, before? I'll put Daddy Chill on here, okay? Daddy Chill, one second, gonna get something to drink. I'm, I'm thirsty. Be right back.
<sighs> yes. <laughs> okay, guys. I was getting tired of streaming. I was almost giving up after two hours, but I found something. I found something that will give me more energy. <sighs> <laughs> yes, it's time. Da -na 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 -na. Oh, yes, this is a legendary moment, ladies and gentlemen. So keep the questions coming, okay? You guys have to give me some something to talk about, otherwise it's going to be boring. Ah. Yes. Mm. Oh, this is going to be so good. How can I film this without spilling on the laptop now? That's going to that's gonna be challenging. Let's not do that, man. Uh. It was never here, my man. Oh, sorry, my woman. Yes, my love is, uh, is very rare. It only happens like two times per year. But if you hear it, run. Run for your life. No, I'm being a bad influencer, man. Hashtag influencer. Look, I'm giving all the children inspiration to do drugs and monster energy. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> No, no, I'm chill out now. I'm getting my high. Ah. Man, this sweater is hot, but I cannot take it off because I have nothing on, under this, so let's not do that. Okay. No. If I see somebody drink Red Bull, I'm ready to punch them in the face. Okay. You're either with the monster team or you are against the monster team. Then you are an enemy of the people. Monster is... I'm exclusive with monster. It's... Uh, we have... You know... It's kind of like this... Uh, we have this like this vow. Let's see... I'm really talking bullshit right now, am I not? It's just the quality the stream has uh, gone down to. Damn. We started off so educational, talking about insects, and look, look at what's happening now. It's, uh, yes, they already made a monster energy with butterflies on it without informing me. Man, they should have collaborated with my channel. Imagine like the, uh, the PR I could have done for them. That's a shame. Have you guys seen a new kind of monster energy that have butterflies on it? I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it. Da, 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 da. See the kind. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is this is so terrible. Look, guys. They released a new kind of monster energy with butterflies on it. And it's not available in my country. Oh, man. See, there's butterflies on the can. It's hard to see it, but like they have these swallowtail butterflies on the can. I require this. So there you go. Carrie. Carrie, stop stop cock teasing me, okay? Because I cannot buy it in the Netherlands. Oops. I hit the laptop. <laughs> Always was. Mm, I had them before, but it was not really a good breeding. Maybe um, if I have a, a place to breed butterflies, I will do it and show them on my channel. That would be pretty <coughs> good. Oopsie doopsie. Sorry for that. I'm still here. What you're talking about? I never quit. Ah, oh, hmm. 
look at this haircut. It's so amazing. It just grows randomly every day. Yes, ban her. Mm, I did this with a human once, but uh, not with an insect. But it sounds fun. It wasn't a few minutes, though. It was a few months. But uh, eventually they escaped because they chewed through the string with their jaws. Unfortunately. Yes. Pretty cool, huh? It's the crazy scientist look. I pull it off pretty well. What's a feminine burp? Have you ever seen one? What do I imagine with that? So. Uh-oh. Things are getting pretty tight here. No, 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 not yet. I have some of its remains here. So uh, before I destroy and ravage his body and consume its fluids, I'm just gently caressing it here in my hand here. With my fingers, ooh. Mm. Yes. Wow, that's not what I imagined the stream would uh, become eventually. Why not? You have no idea of the things I'm capable of doing to myself. No, it's isn't. It's not finished. I have some. I have some left in here. Have the last bit. Hmm. There you go. Oops, it's dripping. I hope my parents aren't watching this video. Probably not. Great, now I'm covered with monster energy. <clears throat> yeah, I have. There's a video about this on my channel. When I was in Laos, uh, I actually was eating moss. So I don't know if you if you've seen that uh, video before, but um, see, let's see, eating moss Laos. I can show you guys if uh, I share the screen. Share screen. See this video? In this video, I actually roasted moss on a campfire and I ate them. Oh, really? I never tried. If you say so. Hmm, no. Oh, no. Just thanks, man. Mm. Wow, that's really delicious, man. Yeah, Carrie, is the pearl croissant still kicking? It's a butterfly she raised, nice and uh, out of uh, context. I throw them in the trash. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the quality of the live stream is declining, and I am enjoying every single moment of it. No, no, no. I wish, I really wish I had a cool space to breed tropical butterflies. Really, I do. And uh, my plan is maybe to build one next year. I really want to build like a small butterfly house with uh, the food plant for tropical butterflies. But it's expensive. It's very expensive. I have to make some room in my garden, make the butterfly house. Um, if that happens, I am going to uh, breed the uh, Heliconius. Mm, yeah, I like this channel. I watch his channel. He's a very nice YouTuber, uh, Daniel Amble. Yeah, I, uh, he has a very good project going on in Africa with the edible uh, insect. 
Uh, I think edible insect is a very noble cause. Insects are the most sustainable source of animal protein of uh, probably any animal on the planet. Uh, insects uh, are very high in fat and proteins, very nutritious. So he's doing a uh, good work. I, I breed my moths not to eat them because I enjoy seeing the life cycle because I want to research the life cycle. But if I see him breed them for eating them, that's cool too. I support it. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Yes, I do. Uh, but the moths that I use to feed them are dead. Moths don't live for a very long time. So, um, yeah, the, these moths from my video, they're already dead, but maybe next year I can um, use the hat again, or I can even make a new kind of hat. Yeah, he has a good channel. I watch it too. Um, I am not a beetle breeder. Uh, beetles are not my interest, but I like seeing him breed the beetles. It's interesting to see him talk about the beetles and see how he can breed them. Shout out to Daniel. I don't think he watches my channel. YouTubers often don't watch much YouTube themselves. But uh, yeah, he has a nice channel, man. He's doing good work. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Collection is very important for uh, science. Hey, it was... Uh, Nice to see you, mate. Thank you for visiting. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for chatting. I think uh, next uh, next year we can do it again. So it was a nice uh, Christmas event to do a live stream, I guess. First live stream ever on my channel. Oh, that never give up, my man. Never give up. Uh, maybe maybe you saw my most recent video in which I show my viewers all my failures. Uh, on my channel, I show a lot of successful breeding, but I never upload the failure. But behind the scenes, I have a lot of failure. So the moral of the story is never give up. Try it again and you will succeed. Ooh, those are the one with long horn, right? Those are pretty awesome. Good luck with those beetles. Pretty is yes, pretty epic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that you were leaving. Sorry. Ah, crickets are kind of gross. I think, guys, the house cricket, like the one you see in pet shop, are probably one of the insect that I like the least. I used to be a mantis breeder many years ago, and I had crickets myself. And my God, they smell terrible, really. So the thought of eating them is not very appetizing to me. Crickets have like this pff, terrible smell. Don't seem very tasty to me. I would eat grasshoppers, though. Grasshoppers uh, seem like pretty clean to me. Yeah, I agree. They are pretty gross. They, what, what's really bad is crickets, they also eat each other's excrement and each other's carcasses. When one cricket dies, the rest will eat it. So it's kind of gross. Uh, I think I would prefer to eat grasshoppers instead of crickets. It's, uh, I don't know, I think the bad smell is also because they eat a lot of weird shit. Really now? Well, it doesn't taste anything with salt and vinegar. Does it taste good? Maybe it does. I think even toenails will taste good with salt and vinegar. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what the, my problem is with this species. But the Cacropia moth, the robin moth, is my nemesis. It's my, my, my Achilles heel. Is the one species... I failed to breed for over 10 years, the robin moth. It sounds so weird because I'm an experienced breeder. I breed many species who are difficult to breed. 
And for some people, these Robin moths are easy, but for me, they are so difficult. Uh, oopsie doopsie. But uh, yes, I will try. I will try to change my setup and improve. Probably you. But hey, it's not a contest to me. I am young. I have many years ahead of me. So it's going to be on my channel too someday. Mm, very tasty. Nice. So, yeah, same for me, same for me. They're a bit tricky. They can get diseased uh, pretty fast. It uh, kind of sucks, no? So, um, oh, wow, it's officially Christmas in the Netherlands, by the way. Happy Christmas, I guess. It just uh, became 1 o'clock, so it's 25 December right now in the Netherlands. Not that I care that much about Christmas. Yeah, they're really, they're the biggest uh, silk moth in North America. Merry Christmas to you too, Carrie. Yeah, they do, but so do I. Same to you, my friend. Yes, Merry Crisis. E. Oh, whoa. I agree. I agree. I totally agree with that statement. <laughs> yes, you. So, you guys want to hear me talk about anything? Got any questions? Same to you. Welcome back. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, good luck with those. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, well, can't blame him. So what I think what I'm going to do right now is I am really, really going to finish right now. Uh, it was very fun to hang out with you guys. It was my first live stream, and um, I think it was successful. I enjoy talking to people uh, live on camera. It was pretty cool to chat with some of you and answer your questions. So uh, for that, I say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Thank you for being here. It was two hours and 17 minutes. So you guys have no right to complain. It was the longest live stream ever. Well, it was my first one. So um, I will probably do think about doing more next year. It was pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching. I am going to finish the broadcast right now. In 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, bye, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bye-bye, friends. <laughs>